Hello, this is Brother Kevin coming to you with video number five in our prayer series on 1 Timothy, second chapter, the first verse. I exhort, therefore, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that in authority, that we may lead a life in all quietness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who wills all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. This prayer model is not as popular as the Lord's Prayer, but it's just as important. Um, I would say that it's more uh, probably in-depth in many ways, even though it's broken up into four basic parts. But today we're going to talk about something very exciting, and that is giving of thanks. And in the context of this verse... You're giving thanks for all men. Uh, that means you're giving thanks for the people you pray for. Now, we could just say all men in general, but I really want to stay within the context of that passage. You're making supplication. You're praying all types of prayer. You're interceding. So, I believe, and I don't want to say it's just in stone, but the giving of thanks for men and women here are the ones you're praying for. Okay? Are the ones you're making supplication for are the ones you're speaking God's word over, the ones you're interceding for. But I want to go into thanksgiving for these precious ones, as well as thanksgiving to God for all things. And then I want to say a word on, pr on praise and worship. Now, if indeed you have entered into supplication, prayers, and intercessions, what's the best way to close it out? With thanksgiving. So I'm thanking God, O oh Lord Jesus, that you will meet my brother's needs. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, you will heal their marriage. I thank you, Lord God, for healing their marriage. And I thank you, Lord God, for giving me the privilege to be able to pray, Lord God, for this brother and his wife. That they, Lord Jesus, may be reconciled and that there might be healing in their marriage. And so I thank you, Lord, for moving in their lives. I thank you, Lord, for bringing the miracle of their marriage together. And thank you, Lord God, that you put a seed in them, that they still want their marriage to work. I thank you, Lord God, that you're working in them that which is well-pleasing in your sight. So, Lord God, bless your name. And thank you for brother so-and-so. And thank you for sister so-and-so. May you be glorified. Also, thank you, Lord God, for our president, Lord God. Give him wisdom. Give him, Lord Jesus, the mind of God. Lord God, if he strays away from you, Lord God, bring him to you, Lord God. If he gets too far going, Lord Jesus, send people into his lives, into his life. Now, Lord, I ask you to bless this man, and I give you thanks, Lord God, for our president, for our government, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing in their lives. Thank you, Lord, that we still have freedom in this country to be able to go out in the street and to be able to share the gospel. Thank you, Lord God, for my pastor. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my pastor's wife. Thank you for our church and the vision you've given us. Lord, may you continue, Lord God, to be blessed as your servant carries out your plan. I'm thankful, Lord God, that I've been sent to minister, to be able to serve in this capacity. Now, you see what I'm doing? I'm actually giving thanks for the very people I'm praying for. And this is a wonderful thing to do because what it says to God is that not only are you grateful, but you're giving thanks that what you just prayed, God brings it to pass. I like what he used to do in Britain. In Britain, there's a funny tradition that I think is great. Uh, somebody would ask for a cup of water, and they would say, may I have a cup of water? Thank you. I, I tell you, that is so, <laughs> it's so awesome. There's a built-in expectation to receive with the giving of thanks. I mean, why don't you practice that with me? Oh, Lord Jesus, I, I believe that you're, that you're bringing forth revival. Thank you, Lord God, for sending it. Wow, isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. So anyway, I just want to encourage you in thanksgiving for the people you're praying for, whether you're making supplication, all types of prayers, or intercession. Now, in thanksgiving in general, the Bible says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy, holy name. 
who forgiveth all of our iniquities, who heals us from all of our diseases, who delivers our life from destruction. In other words, we're not going to forget the, business, the benefits, Lord, hallelujah, of all that you've done for us. So it's just giving thanks. We enter into God's presence with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. So when we give thanks, we're saying to the Lord, we're thankful, Lord God, for what you've done in our lives, for people in our lives, for the people you allow me to minister to and pray for. So that's how you enter, into his gates with thanksgiving. Now when you get into the courts, ooh, now you're moving even deeper with praise. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms 22, verse 3, Thou art holy, who inhabitest the praises of Israel. So I just want to praise the Lord right now. I just want to give him the glory just for who he is. And I want to praise him for sending Jesus Christ, the beloved of the Father, the only begotten Son of God. But not really anymore. Actually, he's the first born from the dead, and we are the numbers after him. Praise him. Hallelujah. I'm a son of God. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who have been redeemed under the hand of the enemy. Lord, we just praise you. We just give you the glory for who you are. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy that's followed me all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you that you sit on the throne, Lord Jesus, that angels, seraphim, and cherubim, Lord, bow before you. Cover their faces, Lord God, in worship. Oh, Lord God, we magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt you. Now, as you're praising God, you may notice that the presence of God is being stirred up within your heart. Because we just quoted that scripture in Psalm 22, verse 3, Thou art holy, who inhabitest the praises of Israel. Okay, now, I'm going to get into some things that I think are really wonderful. When the presence of the Lord is, is released in your life, um, I call that worship, because worship is just like the other two, but the only difference is, in the realm of worship, worship is response-oriented. Almost every time it's listed in the Old and New Testament, it almost has a connotation to it of, bow, of bowing down. In other words, it's a response. It's a, it's a res responsive action. Okay, so I, you may worship and tears come before your eyes. You may worship and fall prostrate. You might worship and begin to lift your hands. You might worship and just be in silence. Hallelujah. That's a great form of worship. But worship is response oriented. And so as you begin to sense the presence of the Lord as you're giving thanks and worshiping him. And then you've noticed that the presence of God is manifest. This is when the worship realm begins because you begin to respond to his spirit and also respond to his instructions. This is also one of the ways that the prophetic realm is opened up. When the worship is there, when the presence of God is so evident. This is when a lot of times prophetic ministry can flourish under praise and worship. I don't have a whole lot of time to get into this, but I say this. Uh, learn to spend time. Hang out with Jesus. Give him thanks. Not only for all men and for kings and all the people you're praying for, but give him thanks because you love him. Give him praise for who he is. Give him praise because he's holy. Give him praise because he's great. Give him praise because he's coming back again. Hallelujah for you. Hallelujah for me. Hallelujah. And as you begin to sense the presence of God, then you begin to hit your knees saying, Oh Lord God, you're in this room. You're in this room. I can feel you, Lord. Praise your holy name. And you begin to hit your knees, you begin to raise your hands, or tears begin to flow. Or the Lord may, out of that presence, begin to speak to you and give you prophetic directions, prophetic prayers, or an instruction, maybe an intercession, a place he wants you to go. But I tell you, get used to hanging out with God. Get used to hanging out with the Holy Spirit. Get used to have uh, knee time, worship time, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So now, remember... This here is set at the last part of this prayer model. Uh, and the Lord's prayer model is first and last, particularly in, in Matthew's gospel. But here it's last. But I just want you to know that you can worship and praise God first, last, in the middle, all you want. But it's just that this prayer model says, for all men. So give thanks for your local pastor. If you have one, praise God. Give God thanks if you have a missionary that's in your life that your church has sent out. Give God thanks for your parents who raised you, whether they're Christians or not. Thank God. Praise Him. Begin to just be grateful. 
There's nothing more contagious than a thankful person. You want to be around people who are thankful. You want to be around people who are grateful because they have an aura. Something comes out of them. You know what comes out of them? The goodness and the love of Christ. Hallelujah. So, anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, these videos. We're going to have a closing video in just a moment. So, uh, what next series or next uh, video. So, anyway, I want you to have a good time in Jesus today. Uh, be blessed. I love you and Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.